Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Well, now that we've reached the end of the 2022 breeding season, one of my favorite activities is, of course, selecting the holdbacks, where I pick the cream of the crop of boas produced here to represent the next generation of my breeding projects. Today, I'm going to share with you some of the choice boas that I've decided to hold back as future breeders from the 2022 babies. And I'm also going to go over the criteria that I use to pick these holdbacks, so be sure to stay tuned. So how do I select which of the many boas produced here that I'm going to keep as a future breeder? Well, there's a number of criteria that I use. The first is just if I have a boa that really stands out. And this doesn't happen all the time. In fact, most litters don't have a standout. But once in a while, I'll have a litter that has a baby that's just so much better than all the others, in my opinion, that I know from the, from the very moment of its birth that it's going to be a holdback. And I would say maybe 10% of the litters, I have one that just stands out like this, so it's not all that common. But when I see it, I make a mental note of it, and I really follow that animal closely, because I know I want to hold it back. And this, of course, is not the, what happens most of the time. Most of the time, I have a lot of nice bows, and I have to kind of decide which ones I'm going to select. Which brings us to the next criteria. You want to pick holdbacks that are just really good examples of the locality. Maybe you've read Vin, Vin Russo's book, maybe you've looked at all the pictures online of the different locality boas, and you have in your head what a Sonoran boa or a Paraguayara boa or a Tarahumara boa ideally should look like. So you want a boa that best embodies the physical characteristics that make up the locality as far as how you see it. The third criteria is kind of related to the second, and it's just you it embodies the criteria that you specifically are looking for. So say, for example, you have in your head this idea of what an ideal Suriname should look like. Maybe the saddle should be peaked in a certain way. Maybe the background marking should be a certain way. Maybe it should be a certain, certain shade of color, etc. And only you can decide on this. And this is where it gets kind of into selective breeding. You're kind of taking the project in the direction you see. But you want to be on the lookout for babies to hold back that embody these characteristics as far as where you want to take your breeding projects in the direction of. And then lastly, you want to pick breeders that you need in your collection. So, for example, I have a lot of Suriname holdbacks already from the last five years or so. So I'm probably not going to hold, or I'm not going to hold back too many Surinams this year, even though I have a lot of really nice ones that I could hold back. On the other hand, uh, Tar Humara boas, I don't have too many in my collection, and they've been really, really popular lately. So I want to hold back at least one Tar Humara boa, even though I already have a good breeding group, because I know the demand for these boas is going to be high in the future. They have relatively low breeding capacity as far as the litter size and I want to add more to my breeding group. So you have to look at your own breeding group, you know, what deficiencies you have and what you want to add to that group. So with that in mind, let's have a look at some of the, my favorite holdbacks for 2022. This first holdback is from a boa that I really even wasn't considering holding any animals back. But then I saw the babies and I changed my mind. This is a Coop's Pastel Colombian boa. And so this particular animal just looks like she is dripping with orange paint. And it's about half of the litter. They just have this really intense, beautiful orange coloration. In fact, it almost looks like it's photoshopped or something. But I can assure you it's not. And I really wasn't planning on holding any back because this isn't really a specific locality. And I have the Branchia Columbia boas. But I saw these animals and they just really blew me away. This is a project that was started in Europe by a uh, breeder by the name of Sylvia Koopst. And then it was continued by Vin Russo and they've just been selecting for these more intensely pastel colored boas with every generation. And so I'm really excited about continuing the project and seeing just how intensely orange of a boa can be produced. These animals are also great because they're just so enjoyable to handle and they're so mellow. You just make great pets. You can see this female, she's so mellow. She's not even really moving. Let's see if I can get her to move. But just a really cool animal to have as a pet that you can just take out and hold and admire. If you've been following the channel and saw my breeding results this year, you know that uh, 2022 was the first year that I had a morph litter. 
And this is a hole back from that litter. It was a jungle moron crossed with another jungle moron. This is an example of an animal that just instantly stood out as a holdback. This is a super moron jungle boa. Just an amazing looking animal with this crazy intense red and really cool jungly pattern. But just a really cool looking animal. Really uh, looking forward to seeing this one develop. But I knew that I just had to hold this one back because I really like the super moron. You rarely see super morons. I think there have only been a handful of them produced. And I'm also interested in trying to breed it because it's still somewhat up in the air whether or not the super morons can breed. So hopefully, with any luck, this female will be the first documented case of a super moron having its own litter. But just a really amazing looking animal. Really the pinnacle of uh, the morph breeder art. The super moron boa. This is just uh, what I would consider to be living art or you know a designer boa i decided to hold back one additional animal from the moran jungle morph this is this guy this is a moran jungle male and i actually produced four moran jungles two males and two females they were all quite nice but for some reason this guy just stood out to me i just love his pattern you know it's not perfectly symmetrical but i kind of like that it's not perfectly symmetrical and he just has this intense creaminess to him you know the color kind of seems like it's dripping off he's just so warm and saturated and beautiful looking animal i like also how he has some of the saddles are kind of joined together in kind of a stripe or chain just what i really like to look for in jungles i think what's interesting about this litter is i actually did a survey on the communities page for this youtube channel where I posted pictures of all four of the Moran jungles and I asked my viewership to vote for the one they liked the best. And the final tally, it was pretty close. You know, all four of them got a pretty high vote. I think, the, you know, the lowest was in, in the teens as far as percentage. Highest was like, I think, 40. Um, but what was interesting, this guy actually got the lowest amount of votes. So among the viewership, they liked the other three a little bit better, not that much better, but just a little higher in terms of the votes. But you know, to each his own. I really like this one. This one just really speaks to me. Um, you know, maybe it doesn't speak as much as the other ones do to some of the viewers, but that's fine with me. You know, we all have our own opinions and it's great that we all have different, slightly different tastes in boas. 2022 was a pretty good year here for true red tail boa constrictor constrictor breeding and I produced animals from three different localities. One of the most exciting was the, this one. This is from a litter of uh, Venezuelan red tail boas from the Tomatama, Venezuela locality. I think she was getting a little defensive. She looked like she was going to strike at the camera. But uh, these, uh, it's really exciting because these are really rare boas and you rarely see these Venezuelan red tails in captivity. So I'm really happy to have produced a litter. And I decided to hold back a trio, two females and a male. This is one of the females. She just kind of spoke to me because she's got these kind of more aberrant looking saddles. Uh, the other two are kind of more of a you know classic look of the Venezuelan with the more symmetrical bow tie saddles. But I really like how this female has these kind of jagged looking saddles. And she's also got this really nice light creamy yellow color. Just a beautiful boa. There's just a quick close-up shot of the Tomatama Venezuela true red tail boa. 2022 was also a really good year for Suriname boas with several really nice litters produced here. And I have a lot of Surinams in my collection. I have a lot of nice holdbacks from previous years. In fact, uh, the ones, most of the litters produced this year were pretty closely related to litters I produced in the past. But I did have one first time breeder that produced a litter that's not as closely related. That is my Lafleur, Russell Lafleur female, who is probably about five feet long. So she appears to be kind of a semi dwarf true red tail if uh, one should exist. But I decided to hold back some, a pair of babies from that particular litter. And it was a hard choice because they're all really nice. They all have different characteristics. Some are really, really colorful like this one. Some have a really nice, more symmetrical pattern. And I kind of went back and forth several times. But I decided to pull back some really nice, colorful animals 
This female was probably the most colorful female. You can see her long red tail there. And she's pretty active, so we'll put her back in a sec here, but just a really nice boa, and I'm hoping that this animal can found the, a line that uh, is kind of a semi-dwarf. Hopefully her babies will be in the same size range as the mother of her, you know, about five feet or so, because a lot of people think it would be cool to have smaller true red tail boas. But um, as I mentioned, there's a lot of like really nice animals on this litter that uh, are up for sale, and I'm kind of second guessing, should I hold back some of those instead? But you know, sometimes you just have to let things go when you're breeding boas, you can't keep them all. The third type of true red tail I produced this year was the Pacapa Peruvian. And these have been harder for me than the Surinams. I just had one small litter of four babies. But I decided to hold back a pair. I just don't have as many of these in my breeding group and wanted to add to them. You can see that beautiful red tail there. This particular female has this really light color. These really nice kind of pinched, slightly peaked saddles. And I just love that tail. It's kind of more intense red than I often see. It's the, the red in the Peruvians is often more of a brownish. This one is quite a bit brighter. I also like how that third tail blotch you can see is kind of really big. Just something that stood out on this animal. Hopefully I'll have a better year in 2023 and I'll have more babies that I'm able to offer to you guys because I know how many people want these Peruvians and how in demand they are for you know for the boa enthusiasts out there. One of the locality boas I produced for the first time in 2022 is the Cockerkey dwarf boa. And I really like these guys. This is uh, one of the females. I actually decided to hold back two females and a male since I only had the original pair, the parents of these animals in my collection. And I really like these little guys. They're one of the smallest baby locality boa. Another thing that's noteworthy about them is they all look very, very similar, almost identical. I could have basically held back any of them and they would have been equivalent. So if you're buying one, chances are it's gonna look pretty much a clone of this one. And you know, the babies are pretty much clones of the parents, just much smaller. I think what's going on is these animals are from a small island and they're descended from a small, very genetically homogeneous group. So they're probably highly inbred and they all pretty much look the same. So kind of an interesting situation from an evolutionary and genetic perspective to ponder. But uh, interesting to see if any variants pop up in captivity, but most of the cocker key boas I've seen in photos pretty much are spitting images for any other one, you know, provided they're pure cocker key boas. Another dwarf boa holdback for 2022 is this Tarhumar Mountain dwarf female. And I had um, kind of a small litter of these this year, and it was highly female uh, based. I think I actually only had one male who went off to his new home and hopefully future breeder. And this particular female, I decided to hold back because I have a pretty decent group of these animals, but my original breeders are getting kind of old and I don't know how much longer they'll be able to breed. So just wanted to raise this female up just to have a replacement if I need it for, you know, a few years down the road. And I also really like these animals. I think their small size is great. I love their personalities. I think they're beautiful to look at and you know, I've always just really liked these guys. And you know the popularity of these tar humara boas has really skyrocketed recently. For a while they really weren't all that popular. And I think a few years ago someone decided that they were like a mini Argentine boa and you know Argentine boas have been so popular. So these guys have just gotten really popular. But unfortunately the supply is really low so I want to add this animal to my group so Hopefully I can produce more of these beautiful dwarf boas in the years to come. And last but certainly not least, we have a hold back from another dwarf boa locality produced this year. It was a really good year for dwarf boas. This is a quality dwarf boa. And so this particular animal is a female. I had a very heavy, female heavy litter, not too many males. But I decided to hold a female back for the same reason I held back the female Tarhumara. My breeders, or original breeders are getting kind of old. Just wanted to grow up an animal so that I have uh, 
this animal ready for when my original breeders retire. What's noteworthy about Qual Keys, even though they're kind of similar to the Cogger Key and also from a small island off the coast of Belize, there's definitely more variability. You see some with kind of more symmetrical orderly patterns, some have kind of more aberrant patterns and striping. And I kind of like the more aberrant look to this female. You can see her saddles are kind of jungly looking, not too symmetrical. And then she's got this stripe towards her tail. Just a really cool looking animal. Another really great dwarf boa. It makes a great pet for someone who wants a boa that doesn't take up too much space. And uh, I think she's trying to strike. She's uh, can be a little defensive. The babies sometimes are like this. They just have to defend themselves from predators for the first few months of their lives. But they pretty much always will calm down once they get to about six months or so. So that's the last of the holdbacks that I want to share with you today, but I think a really great group of animals to grow up as future breeders here at Brian Boas. So those were some of my favorite holdbacks for 2022, but I just wanted to leave by saying that although these are the cream of the crop as far as I see it, I have lots of other really, really nice boas. And in most cases, it was pretty difficult to choose which ones were gonna be the holdback. I could have easily have gone in another direction. Unfortunately, I only have limited amounts of space. I can't keep all my baby boas. In fact, I really can't keep more than about you know 10% at the most. Um, even with, today, with the holdbacks I've selected for this year, I probably will have to unload some of them, unfortunately, in the next few years, go off to new homes. Um, I have limited amounts of bandwidth and I like to keep my options open by holding back certain animals in case a few years from now I want to be breeding in this direction or that direction etc but I know that based on my bandwidth I'm probably going to have to rehome a few of these animals over the next few years I just don't have enough bandwidth to keep them all going but it's always a lot easier to hold an animal back for a few years and then sell it than to try to get it back after you sold it. And when I first got into breeding, I made the mistake of not holding back enough animals and there were quite a few animals I regretted selling. Um, and of course I can't get them back. So I wanna be a little bit on the cautious side of keeping animals that I might want to have in my breeding group later on, rather than selling too many and not being able to get them back. So it's a lot better to have an animal and not need it, rather than to need an animal for your breeding projects and not be able to have it, as I put it. Um, that in mind, the last thing I wanted to say is that although these are my holdbacks, there's lots of other really high quality animals. And just because you're not buying a holdback animal doesn't mean it's not holdback quality, whatever that means, or of second quality or anything like that. You can rest assured that all the boas I sell, unless otherwise described, are gonna be really, really high quality animals and great representatives of the particular locality. So you don't need to obsess about, well, is, am I getting that the highest quality boa or is this boa not quite as good as the ones he held back? Because they're all really great and on, on any other day, I may well have held back different animals for, you know, than the ones I showed in this video. So as always, my animals, I stand behind them and I guarantee that they're the top quality locality boas available today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line or write it in the comments below. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.